What's making that thing move forward? How is that doing that? Three, two, one, lift off. Hey, greetings. I'm so glad to see you again. Welcome back to Faraday Studios. And you know me, hopefully you know me by now. I'm Jake Wizard 4. And you know what I like to do every once in a while? I am a chemist by training, but uh, I like to do a little alchemy once in a while, just for, just for fun. Made some gun cotton. Isn't that sweet? Ooh, that was a good one. I felt that. I think I lost a hair or two there. Goodness. Well, speaking of fun things to do in your lab, I'm telling you, this is sweet. It's called a PVC rocket launcher from Hardware Science. And we've been working with Hardware Science folks for, I don't know, many, many years. This is one of the many kits they put out and I just fell in love with this thing. So today we're gonna look at the science behind this little PVC rocket launcher. That's kind of cool. Then you squeeze the bulb, let's find out. Well, I barely, wow! That's amazing. Do that again. Oh, that was sweet. Straight up, straight down. Man, that, that means it's <laughs> balanced fairly well. That's sweet. Look here, this thing rotates. Oh, oh you know what I'm thinking. I wonder where my brother is. <laughs> That's sweet. I didn't do it. I didn't do that. I often use a word when I'm describing scientific phenomena, and the word is elegant. And this is a very good example of an elegant bit of science. I want to use this paddle and the ping pong ball to demonstrate what's going on inside this tube to launch that rocket. Notice the speed of the bounces. There one, da, 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 da. Okay, there you go. Now I'm going to add some pressure. I'm getting to be an old wizard. I'm not as agile as I used to be, so we'll try it. I'm going to drop this. And I just want you to, to watch the motion of the ping pong ball when it's under pressure. Isn't that sweet? Did you notice something? What happened to the velocity of that ping pong ball bouncing as I increase the pressure? Yeah, it's sped up quite a bit, right? We're adding a lot of momentum. When we squeeze this ball, we're adding pressure to all the air molecules that are in there. Now those air molecules are in here and they're vibrating like this, kind of like the ping pong ball. Because heat in the room, the ambient air makes the molecules vibrate. And when I put pressure on them, just like the ping pong ball right there, they start vibrating faster because they're getting squeezed down. So when I squeeze here, those molecules push against the ones next to them and the next one and the next one, and they're pushing just like that pedal. And they're going, hey, 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 we're squeezing it. They're going to build up enough. They build up enough pressure to push this thing off the top of the launcher. And the few molecules that are right under the very tip of this one are pushing hard enough and that's how that force is transferred from my hand. We squeeze down on it and they start vibrating faster and faster and they push harder. Bam! Finally it goes up. There we go. Didn't know all that was going on in there, did you? We're just making those air molecules move a little faster by adding pressure and away we go. Ooh, where'd it go? Right through the roof and hit an airplane. My God, I shouldn't have done that. How does a propeller propel? It says propeller car. And if you want to find out how to, right down here in, in the description, you can see how to order these kits. This is really cool. Propeller car, my hardware science. Let's see what's in it. Woo! There's magnificent propeller car. Sweet, and you turn it on. Wow. Give it a shove. Weep! My cat is going to love this thing. Wonder what happens. Oh, it doesn't even hurt at all. It was pretty safe. Yeah, that's not going to hurt anybody. But what science could be involved with that? Why, is it, why would you call it a hardware science kit? Because you just made a toy car, right? But you do have to think. And this old wizard, I want to pose this question to you because we all know that this propeller is propelling the car. How does a propeller propel? And that's just what I want you to think about just for a second. Just a little bit of science. And I want you to consider for a moment, grab your beard. It really helps if you grab your beard here. What is touching that piece of paper? And believe it or not, on each side of this paper, there's about 15 pounds of air pressure. Atm you know, atmosphere goes up about 60 miles, creates atmospheric pressure, and it's pushing on this side. The paper is pushing on that side. And if I added more pressure on this side, the paper would go that way. And if I added more pressure on this side, it would go that way. 
Now I'm gonna turn this into a propeller. I'm gonna take this piece of paper and watch you. Ready? I'm gonna turn it into a propeller, right? Whoop. There, I just did it. You see that shape? Does that look familiar? What is the paper gonna do? I'm gonna blow on the bottom of the paper. What's it gonna do? It goes up, right? Because I'm increasing the pressure on this side, of course, because I'm blowing the air on it. Yeah. So, uh, so grab your beard. What's gonna happen when I blow on the top side of the paper? Uh-oh, that's not right. Blow on the bottom, goes up. Blow on the top, it blows up. Well, that's not right, something's going on here. Air molecules are hitting down here, yep, and they're hitting up here, 15 pounds per square inch. When I blow underneath, I increase the pressure. When I blow across the top, I push some of the air out of the way, just for a second, push it out of the way. I lower the pressure on the top. So this air puts it, lifts it up. If I could sit here and do this fast enough, I could take off and fly. You know, there's another way besides me blowing on this thing. But what if I just got this curve to move through the air? Instead of me blowing the air over there, what if this thing came running this way? Ah, and the air ran over the top. It'd be the same thing. Is that when I turn this on, the air, this rushes through the air, kind of like me blowing over the top of it and creates a low pressure area, some of that air is knocked out of the way. So the air back here just pushes it forward. It's pushed forward by the air back here because we're getting rid of some of this up here just temporarily. So just for fun, I built a little track. This is what I have, I know better thing to do. This is kind of fun. I built a track. It's just wide enough for this. Can you see that? <laughs> I think one of the things I want to do Another little experiment. I'd like to try, not experiment, but just a little research activity. If it travels on different surfaces, better. And this one's just an old painted board. It's just creeping along, huh? I don't even know. Let's see, does it travel better out here where it's smooth? Oh yeah, oh yeah. So I guess this is not gonna do well on carpet. See, I just did a test. Yeah, sweet. The BrushBot kit, Hardware Science BrushBot kit, has in it something that kept me completely engaged in building a little robot. Look at that thing. It's made out of a brush and it's got eyes. It will look back. That's amazing, that thing. Oh, this is one-eyed guy. He's winking at me. Everything in this box is all you need to build a little robot that's really fascinating. And there's even a track in here that it runs on. There's some interesting science you can do with this little robot made from a brush. Let me show you. It's so simple. I mean, you look at the parts. There's a brush and a little uh, electric motor. So it's obviously like a volt and a half motor because we have a volt and a half cell up here. That's right. And we got some rubber bands and such holding it together, which is kind of cool. And then the, these are called leads, wire leads with little alligator clips on the end. And you look at them, they look like little alligators. Yeah. You get it on your finger, you'll know it's an alligator clip, that's for sure. And on the end of the motor shaft, that's the motor and that little rod that's sticking out, it's called the shaft, there's a hex nut. Why do they call it a hex nut? Oh, it's got six sides on it. Woo, I figured that out myself. I'm the wizard. Connect the leads. Here we go, fire it up. Oh, look at that thing go. Look at it go. That is going hundreds of RPMs rounds per minute. That thing is really flying. You'll notice in the kit also, there is this piece of plastic tubing, which is actually a track. Oh, look at it go. A brush bot, isn't that sweet? I really like that. What's this got to do with science? Well, first of all, it takes some thinking skills to assemble a thing. You have to think logically to assemble it, but it's not that difficult. But when you analyze it, and that's a seal, analytical thinking, you can feel it vibrate. Where's that vibrating coming from? It's like back and forth. Motors are supposed to run, you know, in a circle like that. Well, really, we know that when you build this, that you put that nut on there, you can't get it on there perfectly centered. It's almost impossible. It's a little off-centered. So when this thing rotates, it kind of wobbles. We want this to run badly or just a little bit to make it vibrate. And when it vibrates, of course, that motion gets translated down to these flexible bristles and they can bend and flex. And can you just picture that in your head, model that in your head, and that's what scientists do, they model things in their head. Just model what happens 
as that goes back and forth just a little bit. And that's the science part of this activity. Not necessarily the building of it, which is fun. That's probably a little more engineering, I guess. But just the picture how it works in your head is what the important part is. What's making that thing move forward? How is that doing that? The bristles can only get bent so far and they push back. They get bent again by the vibrations and they push back and there it goes. You're running around in a circle. This gets a little monotonous just looking at the thing going in a circle. So, you know, we built something and you know, this is one of the challenges I'd have you do is what else could you do with this bot just for fun? And this, this will magically appear. Watch how this happens. I'll wave my arms and this thing will slide across. Wee doggies. That's the way it works here at Faraday Studios. Things magically appear. I built a track because I, I wanted to, uh, you don't have to do this. It's kind of fun. I put all these markings on here so I can track this thing. We've got different surfaces because I wanted to do some testing. So I want to see how this guy will do on a plastic surface. Hmm. Oh, he's really tearing it up. Ready, set, go. It's a race. Maybe I can put two on there and have a race. Now I wonder what would happen if I put a different surface on there. Oh, that's some corrugated cardboard. Yeah, that's the way I feel in the morning. I'm not going anywhere. Take off, boy, go. Go, boy. Come on, you can do it. Oh, we got some cork. Now it's moving a little bit. I think the smoother ones work better, didn't it? Take that one out. Let's see what it does just on the wood. Ready, set, go. Oh, yeah. But you're going to have to find this out for yourself. What surface works best? Well, I hope you enjoyed learning about this kit. I, I love it. I'm a, I, I really do enjoy this. Even a guy at my age, it says for age of six plus. Well, I'm way over in the plus column on that. And I encourage you to pick some of these up. They're great. There's the information where to get them right down here. And it, when you buy these, it helps our efforts here at Midnight Science Club, which is great. That allows me to get more gun cotton. Thank you for being here with us. I just missed. That was brilliant. <laughs>